In this video, I'm going to show you how to critique and interpret the quality of femur x-rays using the Paceman image evaluation criteria. I'm going to take you through six different examples showing you how you can identify what works and what could be improved. Again, this should be a relatively short one. Let's get into it. Okay, welcome to the first case. In this one, we're looking at an AP proximal femur, aka sometimes the hip down view of the, of the femur. Um, just before we start um, going through these, similar to the tip fib, because the femur is one of the longest bones in the body, and because it also needs a bucky, meaning we can't use the diagonal portion of the detector, often we have to do them in two segments, the upper and the lower, or the proximal and the distal. And so in uh, most femur areas, particularly for adults, you see ones that either have the hip joint, okay, like in this case, or they have the knee joint included. And so ideally you do both of the AP and the lateral with a little bit of overlap in between to cover everything that you need. Now, let's talk about this one. Um, positioning, is it positioned well? Well, is it rotated or is it tilted? It's definitely not tilted in any way. It's, um, you can tell the um, greater and lesser trochanters are in, um, in profile. So that means the patient was in pigeon toe as they should be for this X-ray. So the position is quite good. It's nice and centered with the X-ray. There's no rotation. Happy with the position. Everything's good there. In terms of area, has everything been included? Well, because this is a hip down view, you're not going to see the knee joint, so that's fine. But do you see the hip joint properly? You almost do, but you're just kind of cutting it off a little bit on the top. So ideally, you would in, you would up the centering a little bit. Now moving on to collimation and centering, up the centering and just keep everything the same. Okay, in terms of top to bottom and collimation. Once you do that, then you get a little bit of the um, the full hip joint in profile. Ideally, you want to have at least from ASIS and down, and anterior superior iliac spine and down. Um, top to bottom is therefore good. Side to side is okay, but collimation could be improved side to side. So all of this stuff over here, not needed. Um, this stuff over here, not, all that sort of not needed. Okay, so slight improvements in that regard. <clears throat> in terms of exposure, Exposure is quite good. You can see nice bone texture throughout. You can see the cortex of the bone, which in this case is quite thick. So this is indicating a young, healthy, healthy male um, in, in this particular case. Otherwise, the penetration of the uh, x-rays are good. The contrast levels are okay. So I wouldn't really change anything in terms of the exposure. With the marker, there's a left marker over here. Now, ideally, the marker should be on the lateral side, but this is in fact the left uh, femur. So something like that or somewhere over there would be ideal. So not that it's necessarily wrong, just would the um, change in position would have been ideal. Aesthetics and artifacts, there's no artifacts that I can see in this particular case. And the aesthetics is really, really good. Everything is in line and position. You can see the anatomy quite well. Again, the only thing is that they could have sent it a little bit higher to make sure that they have everything. And lastly, end for name, no name or identification is seen for anonymous uh, reasons. There's no pathology that I can see in this particular case. The neck of femur looks quite good. The actual long bone of the femur looks quite good. Uh, very thick cortices, as I mentioned. So everything is fine, at least in my eyes at the moment, for the pathology. Hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is also a left um, proximal femur, but it obviously looks a little bit different to the previous one. So going back and forth to that one. So this one's ideally really good. This one, not too much. Now, in this case, if, I would say they've included a little bit too much of the top moving towards, you know, the iliac crest and whatnot. The ASIS is roughly around there. So you want basically no higher than that, right? So at least no higher than that because it's not relevant for the X-ray. But in terms of positioning, um, you see the greater and lesser trochanter in profile. So pigeon toe was adhered to. There's no sort of tilt per se, you know, and it's very rare to see a tilt in a femur X-ray just because they are going to be lying down on the bed and the centering and collimation is relatively simple because it's aligned to the bucky itself. Um, so centering, sorry, the vertical alignment is quite good in terms of positioning. Um, they've included, um, now moving to area, they've included definitely the hip joint, but they haven't obviously included the knee joint. Not that they would have, but they could have brought the centering down and kept the collimation the same. I'm assuming the top to bottom collimation was maxed out, but side to side collimation can definitely be improved. Okay, none of this over here is needed. Now, and in fact, if you look closely, you can actually see the patient's hand fully in profile. So that's definitely not good. Um, we shouldn't be exposing other body areas if they don't need to. Um, so that's that. Top to bottom, we said is good. Side to side is good. Now, side to side, mostly on the outer side is, is not ideal. So the centering should have been a little bit more that way. And then to bring the um, collimation in side to side. And generally, I look at the pubic symphera to say anything Beyond that, I don't really need. So because it's so close there, it seems to be okay. So that's centering and collimation. 
exposure exposure is quite good in this case um you know the brightness is a little bit up um so that could have been fixed in post-processing uh, i would say kvp could be slightly improved just to increase the penetration of that area but honestly not really needed you can see the bone texture quite nicely particularly in the femoral head um, and down here you can see detail quite nicely of the bone soft tissue uh, and, and everything there in terms of marker there is a left marker over here that is correct but otherwise it's just a little bit placed too far out i would bring it a little bit closer to the anatomy either on the top or the bottom whichever is most suitable um, aesthetics and artifact i'm just going to rub all this stuff out first So in terms of artifact, I wouldn't really call the hand an artifact. It's just something that should have been shouldn't have been X-rayed. There's a there's a little sort of line over there. I'm really not sure what that is. It doesn't seem to be clothing. I'm really not sure what that is over there, but it's a bit of an artifact. On the top, it's okay. There's some slight lines around here. Maybe that's the patient's underwear, etc. And obviously in the middle, you have the genitalia, the soft tissue sign. Um, I believe they call this a John Thomas sign. So you can Google that at your own peril and see what see what that is. Um, otherwise, other than that, it, the aesthetics seem to be okay. Artifacts are okay. Uh, and no name or identification is seen for anonymous reasons. In terms of artifacts, I don't really see any major fractures. Just, you know, these irregularities around some of these bones, which are usually signs of um, arthritis or early signs of arthritis. Um, but it's hard to tell given that, you know, don't really compare to the other side and the symptoms or the radiographic signs aren't that severe. Yeah, so hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're still looking at the proximal femur, but it is the lateral view. Okay, so this is the lateral view. So this is the humeral head. Um, we have the greater and lesser trochanters and then sort of the rest of the uh, femur down there. So in terms of its positioning, this is actually really, really well done um, because naturally when you turn the patient to their side, they are going to be at a bit of an angle. It's very hard to get the lateral femur or proximal femur perfectly in line with the, with the detector without having half of the patient's body off the table. So positioning is quite nice. Um, they've included um, basically the hip joint down and as much as they could have. So I'm happy with that. In terms of area covered, again, that's pretty good. That, going back to positioning, sorry, is it enough rotated? And I'd say it is very enough rotated because this is what a lateral profile of a um, hip looks like. Is enough of the area covered? Definitely because you have enough of the, the femoral head covered and as much as there could have been possible of the of the distal femur uh, right before it gets to the knee joint. Collimation, top to bottom is very good. I'm assuming it was maxed out. But side to side, also assuming it was maxed out because there's all this extra area that is not needed. So changing the centering a little bit onto patient and then bringing the collimation side to side would have helped in this particular case. Exposure, it looks a bit underexposed, okay? Particularly in these upper areas, just because this area in general is a lot more dense compared to the lower areas. So the same exposure is gonna be okay for some areas, but not so okay for other areas. And because usually there are there is pathology in that area, you wanna make sure you've covered it quite nicely. So increasing KVP and MAS for both would have been ideal, um, but it's interesting to see how much this could have been fixed with post-processing. Although I suspect some of the noise levels there are really hard to fix given if, if it was a low enough exposure. Marker, there's a left marker here, so that is correct. Although again, should have been closer to the anatomy and allowing for a side-to-side -side collimation, which would have made it a lot nicer. Aesthetics and artifacts. Um, artifact, again, no major artifacts apart from these little streaky things. And I believe this is just the patient's clothing um, overall. And aesthetics is just a combination of the exposure and the centering and collimation would have made this a nice um, aesthetic to look at, at image. And, and no name or identification is seen for anonymous reasons. Pathology, I don't really see any pathology in this case. There's no fractures in, in the sort of upper distal area that I, sorry, upper proximal area that I see. Nothing down the, you know, distal shaft of the of the femur although one thing i will say it looks like the cortex is relatively thin so you can say there's maybe some signs of osteopenia in this particular patient hopefully that made sense let's move on to the next one all right finally we're moving a little bit more distally now towards the um the knee joint now this almost just looks like an extended knee joint where you're just including a bit too much of the femur so you know take it what you will i'm assuming this was just a distal femur positioning wise how is it it's okay. Now, again, just given the lateral position is always going to be at a slight angle, there's you, it's very rare to get it perfectly straight. Okay, so there's always going to be a little bit of an angle side to side. So that's okay. In terms of tilt, 
it's just there i'm going to be there rotation um how can you tell if it's rotated or not well it's a good indication is that actually the condyles of the femur or aka the knee uh which are these ones over here okay now we talked extensively about these condyles in a separate video and also in the knee critique so check out that if you haven't but in this case we're not really interested in top to bottom we're interested in side to side and it looks like side to side this way Okay, it's relatively in line and therefore it's not too internally or externally rotated. The top to bottom, if you remember, was just to do with the angle and positioning of the um, focal spot signs or where the x-ray is, which for a femur x-ray is not really relevant or, I, or attempting to get that covered. So I wouldn't worry about that. But anyway, there's no rotation or tilt. Positioning seems to be okay. Area covered, how much of the area, you know, you definitely got the knee joint on here. I would say maybe a little bit too much. You don't really need any more than this. The top seems to be, they could have gone a little bit more. The anatomy looks a little big, assuming this is the max collimation that, that was available. So I suspect increasing the SID would have helped slightly. Just because when you increase the SID, uh, even though the patient's anatomy is flat against the board, does make the overall anatomy look a little smaller and you can inc include a little bit more. So assuming this was done at I don't know, 100 or 110 SID, I wouldn't be afraid to up it to 120, 130, you know, within reason, just to make sure you get more of the anatomy on there. So that's in terms of area uh, and collimation. Also, one thing to mention, you know, this thing over here, this potentially some kind of artifact, um, usually what that is, it's the other leg. Okay, which means it hasn't been separated enough. But I'm hesitant to call it a leg because it's just all white. Okay, there's no sort of muscle or any soft tissue detail. So this was probably a lead shield, I'm, I'm going to assume. Okay, or something equivalent to that, where it's just one sort of density. It's covering maybe the patient's genitalia. Um, so the radiation doesn't reach that area. Which, by the way, we don't really do that anymore. Um, which the new advice given to us from the governing bodies. Anyway. So that was positioning, area, and collimation. Collimation against side to side could be improved. We don't really need any of that. And collimation top to bottom could have been improved if the centering was um, brought a little bit higher and you know, collimated top to bottom as much as possible. In terms of exposure, the exposure is quite good. The um, contrast levels are adequate. I see uh, very good detail in the bone texture. So I wouldn't really change much around there. So I'm happy with that. The marker is correct, so left marker for the left knee. Again, you know, you could have brought it over here and reduced all of that collimation that we didn't need. Aesthetics and artifacts, I'm just going to rub all this out again. Okay, so aesthetics and artifacts. Um, overall, not the most aesthetic image because of all these little, you know, lines over here. I'm assuming that's something to do with the patient's clothing, uh, in particular over here. You know, you definitely got the, what looks like a lead shield in that area, not ideal, covering the soft tissue. It's not covering the bone, which is good, but it's covering most of some of the soft tissue. And also small other things such as the brightness and contrast, which could be slightly improved in post-processing. And no name or identification is seen for anonymous reasons. This is obviously just says Kodak, direct view screen, so that's not patient details. So that's that. In terms of pathology, there's a, bu there's a bunch going on. Um, there's a little, you know, cal calcified density in the sort of upper patella tendon or the femoral tendon that connects to the patella. There's some osteophytes around here, so early signs of arthritis. I'm not sure what's going around here. It looks like some you know, degeneration or destruction of some of the uh, bones in that condyle. Um, even the tibia and fibula you know, have a little bit of jaggedy edges, uh, as they say, uh, which is indicative of early arthritis. So that's that. It would have been really good to see the AP weight bearing view of this knee just to see the level of joint space because it's not really, it's hard to see in this particular case. Another way you can judge joint case, uh, judge the joint space is the distance between the actual femoral condyles and the patella. Usually if it's positioned well and there's not much, there's, there's enough joint space there, you can see it, but it's hard to um tell if it's not but in this particular case it looks like it's slightly um, smaller than usual okay so hopefully that made sense let's move on to the next case all right so now similar to the first case this one is a proximal um a femur in the ap position okay it is also the left knee now you guys getting the hang of this so i'm gonna again just quickly talk through it um positioning is quite good um top to bottom i'm um, no issues with the positioning that the greater and lesser trochanter is there no tilt or much rotation that i see area covered you got the hip joint on top and as much as they could have gotten of the 
uh, of the distal femur so that's quite good happy with the area top to bottom and what they've included <clears throat> side to side collimation could have been improved over here okay none of this was really needed so top to bottom would have changed side to side i would just keeping the centering even where it is and just reducing the collimation side to side exposure is definitely a bit off um it looks just a bit gray so i would say both the kvp and mas need to be increased for this one um, just because there's a bit of noise. Now, this could be just be a bad quality image. It just doesn't look like there's much detail going on there. So, expert, and it looks like it's a bit of a larger patient just given the size of the um, soft tissue densities or soft tissue around the patient. So, exposure in general looks a bit gray. I would also increase the contrast and brightness in post processing to fix that. Uh, marker L, marker for left is correct. This is the left femur. So, just, again, have it a little bit closer, bring the collimation down side to side aesthetics and artifacts no artifacts that i see in here just the aesthetics particular um, changing the exposure and in particular the brightness and contrast would be ideal no name or identification is seen uh, for anonymous reasons and in terms of pathology again not no major fractures that i see there this looks like potentially something there but i doubt it um, and the actual joint space itself seems okay, but this area seems a little suspicious. But again, hard to tell just by looking at uh, this particular x-ray. That was a fast one. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to the last case. All right, so this should be very easy for you now. Um, in terms of positioning, again, it almost looks like a just a hip x-ray, not a you know um, femur x-ray. So maybe that was the case, but I just thought I'd include it uh, anyway. Um, so if it was a femur case, you wouldn't really need any of this stuff, right? All this stuff, that stuff is what you need. All this stuff is excess. Even if it was a femur, even if it was a hip case, by the way. So uh, this is just bad collimation, you know, too much area included, um, and not, not probably what you actually needed. Now you could make the case that, you know, the pain, the patient had symptoms in the, you know, left iliac crest and they almost wanted to half a pelvis x-ray so if that's your argument then i can't argue against that but having said that the that could have been improved okay so positioning top you know in terms of tilt and rotation is is okay in terms of how much they've included um too much of this area too much of this area and not enough of this area okay um collimation side to side again could have been improved you know as we talked about that side is too much this side is a bit too much okay um, so all of making the, all of those improvements would have been would have been quite nice. Exposure is actually quite good. However, you can see nice contrast between the bone, soft tissue, and the skin. Um, you can see the bone cortex, bone texture, all the little lines around that that indicate you know different densities in the bone. Marker is correct. We have our left marker there um, in the AP position, and it's re positioned relatively well. Um, given the collimation you can also see I just noticed this now a little bit you know this is the hand and that's the finger and so included too much similar to one of the previous cases which included too much so to bring in the collimation side to side and not overexposing the patient if we don't need to anyway so marker was good uh, what else is next we have our aesthetics and artifacts overall aesthetics is okay but hindered because of just the amount that's included no artifacts, however, that I necessarily see on this. Doesn't look like there's much of a clothing line. You know, these lines over here, this is just the lines of the patient's, um, you know, skin folds, essentially. Other than that, aesthetics is okay. No artifacts. And N for name, no name or identification is seen for anonymous reasons. And lastly, pathology. Do I see any pathology? Not really. You know, if there's any mild joint space, you know, it doesn't even look like it's joint space narrowing slight osteophytes around here but to me it looks okay there's a little bit of a bony island there okay just increased bone density you can google that yourself but other than that it seems okay not much of a pathology going on here okay so hopefully that made sense and we went through um, six different cases so you should be an expert in femur critiques now all right that's it for this one if you found it useful please give it a like i really appreciate it now click here to watch my previous video on the knee critiques and over here for the full playlist of all of the critiques. See you there, stay curious.